True statement. Most elite players demonstrate or possess elite balance in their swing. Yes, even Scotty Scheffler demonstrates and possesses elite balance in his golf swing. And as we investigate the feelings that we have in our golf swing, oftentimes errors in movement will show up in sensations that we experience through our feet. Now there's many resources that will fall in the bucket of high expense technology that can help us evaluate how you move your balance along above and into the ground. But yet what I have for you today is a very lo-fi, low-tech solution. It's as simple as an alignment rod. We're gonna stand on this sucker and we're gonna teach you how to evaluate how you're moving your body in space, how that then is felt as we're standing on the alignment rod. It's gonna help you start to develop better balance, better use of your body mass to exert more force from the ground, improve your motion, and start hitting better shots. But before we get into it, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Let's go. So you hear a lot about balance and weight shift in a golf swing. Now there's some pretty high tech technology out there to help evaluate and also provide feedback to uh, how a person uh, moves their body and therefore affects how they might feel their body mass move in space and therefore kind of hit that radar of what a person's balance is uh, causing or not causing in a golf swing. But yet there's also a very lo-fi uh, tool that we can use to help inform now, what our balance is doing versus what our balance should be doing. And that's an alignment rod. And so the learning here is that if we can position alignment rod directly under the middle of our feet, just like so. Slide the golf ball out in front. And ideally you'd be doing this on a surface where the alignment rod is allowed to kind of press down into the ground just a little bit. Take a normal stance and then just make a backswing. And ideally what you would experience here is that what you feel underneath the middle of your trail foot would be an increase in pressure on that alignment rod. So again, it's tactile feedback. You can feel it sitting under there, even though I mentioned just before that there is a, uh, on the grass surface, a press, given our body weight of that alignment rod down to the ground. If you pay close attention, you should be able to feel the increase in pressure into that trail side. Now, in addition to that, what I wouldn't want to have happen is I wouldn't want to have too much pressure tilt into the trail toe. So while it's true, we want to feel pressure balance moving into our trail foot. We don't want that trail foot pressure increasing what's called anteriorly. So anterior is front, posterior is back. It's bad when we put pressure out into the back toe. And generally what that means is you haven't rotated your pelvis and loaded your glute sufficiently well enough. So a really good exercise is as you're working on the balance, feeling like you're increasing pressure of your trail foot, that you can ever so gently toggle, almost like you're um, a seesaw or riding a teeter-totter, uh, backwards and forwards, and you feel a slight increase in pressure into the trail heel right as you get uh, to the middle of the backswing. Middle of the backswing is when generally pressure will increase the most and reach its highest level through that back foot. And so if that's the backswing awareness that we want to build that tells us we're moving our balance and moving our pressure sufficiently well to hit that kind of level of what elite players do, then what's that next phase of the swing? So there's the pressure right foot or back heel. Then what we want to do is right prior to the end of the backswing, you want to feel this recentering of pressure. And there is two sensations. Again, that we're looking to explore and also develop. The first of those sensations is there's a lightening in our lead foot. And as that lightening in our lead foot happens, it starts to recenter our rib cage, our chest, if you will, more to our lead side. But in addition to that, now we have that conversation about anterior posterior. What we want to have happen is you want to go from back heel, trail heel, to lead toe. And as that happens, you can see there's a slight increase in flex through that lead knee that happens simultaneously to the shift of pressure over onto our lead toe. And again, that shift that we should be experiencing. So again, let's review. 
back swing. I'm centered over my sticks, working to the trail heel, transition into the lead toe, experiencing a squeeze of our knee over our lead toe. And then that final phase of pressure shift, what we should be experiencing is a straightening through that lead leg and a shift of pressure back in to the back heel, right? Not back heel trail foot, but our lead heel. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you get the point, our lead heel. So putting it all together, nice and slow. One, two, three, and on through. And you can see what's happening right there. I could easily lift my trail foot up off the ground. It's not touching that, um, that back stick anymore. And I'm standing very perpendicular to the ground up over my lead heel. Putting it all together into a full swing, and this is what we get. Just like so. When done correctly, you'd be using the leverage of your body to shift from right to left. You'd be using the coil of your body uh, because that coil is an indication to the shift in pressure from front to back side. You'd be using the shift of your body from right to left in the downswing, and then ultimately the coil up into a nice balanced finish in the follow through. So yet again, what I mentioned at the front end of this video is a very low fi or a low tech solution to help you encourage the development of proper what's called ground mechanics, ground force mechanics, to develop the appropriate shift and rotation in your body motion to start playing your best golf. Cheers.